uh, you're stimulating me to write a 10 page article to go on the internet from everything I know and the machetes. Sweet, and good. Some of my experience. So yeah, machetes are your that, passion yeah. and then they pl have a place. We won't talk about them on the camera though. You can save uh, all that knowledge for the 10 page uh, thing. You'll have to uh, check and, on uh, Karamat. Uh, now we're gonna talk about saws. Uh, I might have a big range of saws and you could walk around and look at saws, but basically in survival and high motility, you uh, find that you can bring a blade and construct a frame. And, uh, you know, for example, if you do it enough, you can s construct a very functional frame in 10, 15 minutes and you carry your saw blade. Here recently we got enormous saw blades. So I like to joke about the fact that in Canada, this is the saw blades we use. That's four feet. And that's, and it maybe it's got to fit around your waist. So this blade is, is much too uh, long. <laughs> and so you have a special belt. Now, sometimes you get webbing, the tubular webbing that's used in mountaineering. It'll accept the teeth, but the teeth have to be covered with something because to slide it into there. And then you easy, you pick up buckles, you go, you go to a mountain equipment co-op and all that stuff is there if your blade is narrow enough. So you pick a blade. Now, what size the blade? To me, the definition of a survival saw is one that will fell a hug sized tree. When I say to me, I'm talking boreal forest. The king of fires is two logs that are hug sized and you lay one log down in front of your shelter and you prepare it and twigs and everything. Then you lay a second log and the logs are this long or no shorter than this, not longer than this. And you stabilize and get that fire going. The flame from that type of setup is probably about half, maybe slightly less than a normal fire where you've got logs laying on the ground. You put that log fire this far, sort of maybe a, a, a half a pace in front of a super shelter, go to bed, and you probably don't need to get up for 12 hours to adjust that fire. It'll burn to the, and it burns faster and you're gonna move it back further if it's windy, but if it isn't, pretty soon, six, eight hours later, it looks like one log, but it'll continue building till it's most, that's the king of fires. A fire that's moderated and metered by its size. The smaller the stick, the more it flashes. So when you're surviving in front of a log jam, and it's really bitter cold, and the advantage of the log jam is that the fuel is so readily accessible. You're stacking wood in front, and you're probably lucky to fall asleep for half an hour. And then, to extend that half an hour, you build your lean-to, and everything is calculated to be that when you have to get up, you throw on so much fuel, you can't lay down in your bed because it's too hot. And you wait for that to subside and that extra heat will warm the thermal mass wall. Then you lay down and now you get an extra, you might even double the time. Now in the meanwhile, you're not standing there cursing and so on. You're dancing to generate body heat and circulation. Or you use a kinesiological thing where you push on a tree and you teach yourself as part of your training to generate heat. Dancing pushes, it might be so cold, you hate the fact that you're replacing all that warm air through the pumping action of your dancing and so on. And you do that more or less until you can lay down on the bed and you go to sleep. After a few days, your fuel pile that you gathered is gone. You have no recollection of <laughs> you getting up and doing all these things because you become like a zombie because all that sort of stuff. But you do get a higher quality rest and so on. Now, this saw here, that's got a, a, a frame that's rigid. Now, to me, to fell a hug size tree, well, uh, pretend you're hugging a tree. Uh, it, and this is the space I have here. So the distance between the blade, if I put that here, by cutting from both sides, I'm gonna fell that tree with this saw. And so basically saying the blade should be about nose to fingertip long and the throat better be at least this. So when you're constructing your frame, the, you gotta keep those things in mind. And that you call a wire saw. Well, there's a little chainsaw that you can get. Comes uh, coiled up in a snuff box. Uh, if that guy made that chainsaw to cut by stretching it, that would be, that's my next step probably, <laughs> is to try to get a hold of somebody to change the tooth configuration that it's meant to be used in a buck saw frame. Ah, okay. Not because he's got it like this. And by the time I cut two or three sticks like that, I'm ready to take a holiday. <laughs> that's. 
marvelous idea, but not really applicable to the type of trees we want to cut in the boreal forest. In the boreal forest, we're up to our keister in burnable wood for fuel. We don't go around lighting little fires and sort of squatting over them. And the moment that I, when I see a certain new survival manual, which just seems to be one every few months, and I don't want to bad mouth the authors and so on, but when I look at your campfire and it's a circle of stones and you're using sticks that are meant to fit in, in, in a wood stove, I haven't got the time to see what else that I might be able to ferret out of your writing. <laughs> because you have committed yourself to such an inadequate fire that, you know, that could cause somebody's death. I mean, you've got to know. Absolutely. In the fire rules, the sticks should be no shorter than this and no longer than one and a half. And ideally, as long as you're tall, the bigger the diameter, the better. So usually it's easy to get logs that are like that. You lay down three logs with a spacing of four fingers and then build your fire on top of that and the burning material will all fall between the logs and you will have a nice fire in a short while you lay th three more logs like a pier or two more and then uh, what do the chichaco do they take a big bundle of twigs they light it and then they try to lay big logs on top of it they squash the fire <laughs> and they don't know that that you peel the big logs first and something as simple as that chichaco is that uh, a name American the, the, the same thing as skookum Chichaco means stupid bush idiot. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sourdough in the parlance of the, uh, you know, is someone that has wintered once, winter over one full winter, you're a sourdough. Until, until you do that, you're usually a chichaco. And usually uh, my definition of chichaco is when you recognize a person as a chichaco, stay far enough away that they don't, <laughs> that you don't get, get hurt because you're too close to them. Because they, they just don't know what they're doing. And they're, so the simple code, just like, you know, we always, you know, as you're a lecturer, you always pick things that you just have to say the one word and everybody understands instead of going into a tirade about stupidity and all this. You just say chichaco. Look at that chichaco. Uh, the, the cut, you know, the way that stump is done by chichaco. Or, or you say, you know, that pack frame, ah, from my perspective, that's skookum <laughs> or, or logum. <laughs> Usually I apply logum to, to uh, you know, things more nebulous. You know, in Sweden, you have a beautiful wife, you have two beautiful children, you have a be beautiful house, and you have a beautiful car, logum. How is life treating you? And if all that airs away, and then you commit suicide because things are not exciting enough. <laughs> Logum, I just say so, whatever. Anyway, we, we digress. Uh, a little bit. This uh, saw blade here is uh, unique, and I like to joke with people in Canada. Just before the chainsaw came on the scene, the uh, Alberta Forest Service acquired large numbers. They come in bundles of 10, and, and the, you know, it's almost impossible to get a frame that will fit and we often build frames and the longer the saw the uh, faster you're going to go through the wood and there's a limit now some people carry a folding saw and that's the tool that makes the tools that's okay I, I i have no criticism but when you are talking about bucking up wood when you consider that on a bitter cold winter's day 45 60 below you need you, you visualize a safari van and the logs are as long as the van is wide and the pile of wood is as big. It's got to be bigger, not just sneaking up on it bigger than the side view of the van. You might have enough wood for 24 hours. Now, there's no magic. Some people bring insulative. You know, if you don't want to do that, you better bring bags and other things or bring a stove. So if I have an open fire, that's what I need. But that same pile of firewood with one of Don Cavellis's stoves might last <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> but, but life is so easy if you got a blade like this coiled up in one of his stoves and, and things like that. Or in your belt. And, and, and actually, uh, uh, you know, it, it, you can... Anyway, well, we have one more saw. Uh, Don sells these. Uh, I, I collect uh, popular mechanics, science mechanics, popular science there was four or five mechanics illustrated and when i was beginning to uh, think in terms of writing i realized that those magazines often had many articles on there were 60 categories that i eventually established knots camping 
tools, uh, you know, on and on. And so I had this box that I had these things that were narrow because once they filled, I'd put elastic around it and put it in a file. And uh, I would take these popular mechanics magazines. And so he has a collapsible saw, which, which I would say is up there with regard to, to the convenience. And you got this. And I say to him, I like this blade to be that long. And he says, I can't sell blades that long. No one will buy them. People are their own worst enemy. They go off and they think they're so smart and they figure a smaller saw is better or whatever. Oh, uh, that's why I'm not on the internet because I get so frothed up about <laughs> things in general. And, and very often, uh, although I have, um, you know, uh, a website and dots, dot com and the telephone lines uh, it's hard for me to get the internet and i discovered as time went on that it added to my um, um, mystique that i was sort of off the grid so to speak and Still hard to find and all that sort of stuff I was trying to get you uh, to wear a very big hat so just your mouth would be talking <laughs> yeah, well, underneath the hat well the situation is that some people might be offended because i would sort of sort of say huh i'm going to reach the stage where i'm going to start ranting and raving because <laughs> some of these ideas are lethal from my perspective or something. And I say, uh, uh, I just I don't know, enjoy life and not get embroiled in offending people and so on. But you know, that's the way things go. Here you got a blade that's called diamond point. Mm -hmm. And once it dulls, you find, some people try to take that hardness out of the torch, you just get a new one. Blades are not that expensive. This big blade, uh, that was at, before the era of the diamond point. So you have the, the, the option of maintaining an exquisitely sharp edge. So you with, can't uh, maintain these? The ones no, with the they're too stuff? hard. Oh, I've tried yeah. to sharpen them no, before. No wonder that's, I didn't get that, That's called diamond point. Once it's dull, it's very hard to resharpen. And should it be... Now, I can tolerate this, but as an example, I'm saying, when I say to the maker, and he made me one, when the blade is that much longer and this is a little longer, he said it was too large because he tried it. He tried different sizes, and this is the most popular size. says the others just don't sell. But maybe hearing people, hearing people hearing me say, well, pester them and say, make me the larger size. Need the larger one. Come <laughs> yeah. on, guys. You want to make a real yeah. shelter like this, not a, a lean to. Now, a collapsible tension device. It's uh, so uh, workable and it, it's compact. And you could make a bigger one. You've got to flip the other way. He had to. He had to work a bit to, to. Uh, and this uh, puts an acceptable amount of tension throughout. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's excellent. I, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, the day that Don showed me this, I was ecstatic because I'd read about this saw and I thought this idea was an excellent one. Uh, you know, for some people prefer uh, the collapsible saw over the uh, one and yeah. the belt. And many there's a Seven saw out there that people yeah. tend to like, but this seems yeah. a little bit sturdier because I find the yeah. other one kind of bows a little bit. Now, this could actually be made bigger. Maybe. The, uh, this could also be uh, such that you could have a saw like this as one uh, member of your triangle pack frame. This could be an axe handle, and then this could be something else. You bind the three together, you have a pack frame, and should oh you, you undo the pack frame.